part of the presentation or as part of the app, I built in the actual uh, uh, testing and, and form and all that. So instead of trying to fill it in from your phone here, which could be a little bit hard because you have to zoom in and zoom back out and all that kind of stuff, you can actually click this down at the bottom over to the left side there. You click on that paper icon and it'll actually pull up a different format for you to be able to fill this information in quickly. So you would just click on the top, select the day and time of the appointment. So let's just say that it's all right now. You hit done. You click on the auditor. If you're running the eval, you would obviously select that. I'm going to select myself here. And the temperature, so let's say that it's you know 88 degrees, whatever. Right? Now the cool thing about this is you'll be able to actually go back in and, and use the same data if you're going back to do a test in after the evals happen, you'll already have most of that data collected and it'll already be in there. You won't have to double double back on it. If you're starting out fresh, that you know, with a, an audit test in, you would just start the thing fresh, but it's the same process, and then it's also the same form would be used for the test out. Okay. So we go in, we click on customer info, and just for for this purpose, we're gonna say it's Mr. John Doe or John Foe, we'll leave it at John Foe. Address as 1224 or 1245. <laughs> uh, we're going to say it's uh, North Main Street and we're going to say it's Phoenix, Arizona. And it's got a zip code of 85032. That's the zip code that I'm looking at. All right. No, it's 80602. Anyway, kind of irrelevant. So Cell phone, we're just gonna plug in the cell phone, so I'll use my own cell phone here. All right, so you can add in a second customer's cell phone. Here's where you can add their, their email, so we're gonna say it's john at doe.com. All right, so now it just goes through and it starts asking you the survey questions. So here you plug in, you know, obviously the year the home was built, so Pretty straightforward, 1979, whatever square footage, we'll say it's 2,100 square feet, how long have you been in the home, how long do you plan on staying in the home, how many people live here, does anybody have allergies, asthma, any respiratory issues, it's a drop down menu, so you can select, um, you know, what are the reasons why you decided to have us come out to the home, you can type in and fill that all in, which one's the most important to add, like your comfort, what are some past modifications you've made to the home. Um, this is actually a good question to, to ask, guys. I don't think that this is getting asked enough because if a customer's already done AeroSill as an example, and maybe they've recently added insulation or they've purchased new windows or something like that, we want to make a note of that. If they've if they've recently had AeroSill done, we don't want to recommend a duct seal. <laughs> it makes us look really bad if we if we go back to to do report and we say hey you need to seal up your ducts and they say well we just did that arrow seal a year ago or two years ago like it really makes us look bad so we want to ask these questions so we can identify if there's anything that they've already done so we're not double back and you know going back over that again um, priority questions you know this is the one through five rank it all kind of things you can select as you go through um, these are some newer questions you know you have AC service regularly that's a yes no question if yes who does it um, utility information you know these are drop downs so you can pick and be quick about who who does your your utilities um, so anyway then you get down here to the windows section you can select what kind of glazing if it's a single pane window a double pane window does it have low E yes no um, frame type vinyl, metal, wood, these are the only kind of frames that you're going to run into. And then you can actually start filling in the window measurements. So the direction, you fill that in. Let's say it's an east-facing window here. The location, let's say it's a master bedroom. And then the width, we, we do this by feet, guys, because we're, we're measuring out for window film. If they need replacement windows, we'll go back as a separate appointment and do an actual window measure separate from this with the sales rep. So you're just measuring for for feet for square foot so let's just say that it's a six by five you know they're six by five 
and it automatically calculates your square footage for you, so you don't have to worry about that. You just open up into your next window. Again, we'll say we're east facing. We'll say it's another master bedroom, and we'll say that this one's four feet by three feet. And that's how large it is. But it's twelve feet, right? Well, the cool thing is, is down here on the bottom of that row, in in row ten, it adds up our ongoing square footage, so we know that the total for this column of windows is 42 square feet at this point and then there's another bank for nine more windows and it'll do the same thing at the bottom and it'll add it up for you it'll do the same thing on column three and that's really handy because when you get back over to the report page so if i go back down here and i convert back over to the report you notice that it's tallying that all up for me it just plugs it all in it gives me my total square footage down at the bottom so it's there it's in place i love that the one thing that you'll want to be careful not to do is add north facing windows in the same column that you have your east, west, and south facing windows because we're not recommending film on those windows. So if you're not going to be recommending film on the, on the particular window, you're not going to want to add that into that column because it's going to calculate the total. So I would, I would preserve column three over here for those windows that are north facing or that are underneath a, a good patio and won't need have any actual film right so here that that's for the eval and then you can go back into the construction data here scroll down and you can start putting in more of the stuff you need to make for the actual audit so I kept it separate so that guys that are just running the eval don't have to scroll through everything to, to get what they need here's the page two of that for the pool pumps etc and this is all the information that you need so it's got the drop down menu so you've got the room the dimensions does it have existing transfer returns is there room for transfer or return is there a jump duct what are your testing pressures when you come back and open it back up do you need to test out numbers um, so the audit or the the form itself is pretty straightforward it's just it, all this is is the report just broken down into a, a process that's a little bit easier for you to on a phone if you're doing it on an iPad or a tablet something that's a little bit bigger you might want to actually just pull it up in this view and you know maybe you just click on each one of these individually and you say okay I've been in your house for three years and you hit the next and it takes you to the next build plan on staying here five more how many people live in town well there's four of us okay so I, I kind of worked it so that the the questions follow a specific order but anyway so that that takes care of filling out the actual form itself when you go back to filling in for the pictures, I don't do it in the other view, I do it in this view because I want to be able to fill in my pictures and see them, what it's going to look like on the report. So I click on the field where the picture is and it gives me the option of using my camera or the, the, uh, the actual form library. And so I, I go to photo library and it's going to give me the option of going into my photo albums and I'm actually going to go into like this little one that I put here so that I had access to pictures so I'm gonna put you take a picture of the front of the house and then scroll down I'm gonna find me a picture of the return so let me, let me just go back here I'm gonna be training so there's the picture of the return I need to have a picture of the air filter so again I'm going back into my photo albums and that's I mean that's all it really is guys is like it's that fast you can click through here and, and get those pictures in um, here for the and, and there's a note spot here right so I can click in here you know and I can add notes either typing them in or I can actually click on my little microphone down here and I can speak it so um, need passive air flow back to the return and I can I can talk my text in there and save myself some time as long as you don't mumble too much like I I do <laughs> it, it, you might have to do some uh, editing. Anyway, I get to the ducts page. Um, right now, what I did is I moved it from being six pictures down to four pictures. So, trying to help you guys out a little bit. Like, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to get six pictures, but if we can get four really good, high quality pictures, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working with you here a little bit. Like, I fully expect that you should be able to get six pictures to put into the report, but I've been finding 
reports coming back with three or four pitchers in them, and that's just not acceptable. So I've, I've reduced the amount of pitchers. I've made them a little bit bigger. And so I expect that we're going to have four high-quality pitchers going into this. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to show you how you can actually have a little bit of fun editing pictures and things like that. So um, I go in, I find, let's just take this picture here. So this is a picture of a, a duck that's a little bit pinched because of poor strapping. So I can click on this little button here and it allows me the opportunity to, to draw. So I like to pick a color that I can draw and it'll stand out. So I picked red and I'm using the, the little pen here. And so I'm going to draw and just outline here. And then if you want, you can actually type in a note here or you can actually down here in the bottom, you could put your notes in here. And so I'm going to say, no, I did that wrong because I, I didn't stop talking. Notice that the ducks aren't properly strapped. You can see it says ducks, so I'd have to go back in and edit that because it, it doesn't understand my language very well, right? So I can go back into the photo library here again and find some more pictures of, of duck leakage that I wanna that I wanna put into this report. So maybe I'm gonna take a picture of this. And this is where I would these arrows to indicate where if there's hot air that's getting pulled in from from these locations here, maybe I'll kind of circle that so it'll draw the attention to it. And then it inserts it in there and um, you know it just makes it to where the report is a little bit more user friendly for the customer, for the sales rep that's sitting there. Because in addition to my notes, I've got a little bit of drawings there so I can show them. See here's around the plenum. So here I would actually take a blue arrow and I would draw indicating that there's cold air escaping out of these flanges that haven't been properly sealed. And, and do I, you know, I want to draw, oops, maybe I want to draw specific attention to, to that. And so again, you know, I can, I can edit this a little bit and it doesn't take a lot of extra time. Um, it takes more time for me to do it here because I'm explaining it to you, but it really doesn't take a lot of extra time. And I can do this as I'm going through the audit in the home, or I can do it, you know, while I'm just hanging out watching TV, I don't have to have my computer and my face in my computer. I can do it right from my phone, which is super, super handy. So you just go through and you, you pick out all your pictures, everything that you want to put into this report. You know, here's a picture of a can light, whatever. So I go through, I can make my notes. If there's notes that I'm making while I'm doing the actual audit, so before I actually build the report, when I'm in this section here, Attic sill notes. If I type in attic sill notes here, so I'm just going to show you as an example, can lights need to be sealed and combed. I'm trying to do this a little too fast and I'm getting sloppy. Okay, but I'm just trying to just trying to show you this without taking all day to but anyway, so I put that note here in the actual audit while I was using this portion of it. And when I go back to this page, I should be able to go back up here to the insulation and where you see can lights need to be sealed and combed. So it actually transfers it. So I don't have to type in the notes twice over. If I do a good job of going through my audit form and I fill in all the notes on the other section, it'll auto populate into here or vice versa, wherever you want to put your notes. But it makes it to where you don't have